Welcome everybody, this video kicks off our biochem block. And before we jump into biochem, I just want to go over some terminology. I think it'll help you moving forward. So let's take, for example, ATP. Rule number one, always know what abbreviated words stand for. So what does ATP stand for? If you said adenosine triphosphate, you'd be correct. I had a question about phosphoenolpyruvic acid, or PEP, and I learned it and memorized it as PEP, and all the textbooks had it as PEP, review books, everywhere except for the step where it mattered the most. The step doesn't use abbreviated words, so take that extra time to know what abbreviated words actually stand for. Know that PEP stands for phosphoenolpyruvic acid, etc. Rule number two, know at least superficially what enzymes do what. So if we break ATP down, if we move a phosphate group off, we get a phosphate group and ADP or adenosine diphosphate. Makes perfect sense. Moving that phosphate group off releases a lot of energy, powers what it needs to power. And moving phosphate groups around in general is a very important thing we do. And there are a lot of enzymes that do just that. So kinases move phosphate groups around from ATP sources. Now phosphates aren't solely exclusive to adenosine. You can have phosphates from non-ATP sources. And those are your phosphorylases. Phosphorylases move phosphate from non-ATP sources. And the thing that broke phosphate off in the first place, those are your phosphatases. Those remove phosphate groups. Got that? Now phosphate isn't the only functional group. You can have things like hydroxyl groups. That's a throwback from your OCHEM, what's hydroxyl? If you said OH, you're right. So things that move hydroxyl groups are gonna be your hydroxylases. You can have things that move carboxyl groups. Those are your carboxylases. Makes perfect sense. Something you should be aware of is that carboxylases need a friend. They need biotin. Common questions on carboxylases are, they'll talk about a patient deficient in biotin and then they'll ask you what enzyme wouldn't be working. Look for anything that has carboxylase in it. Okay, then one other thing, dehydrogenases. Help move electrons around. In reactions we call oxidation reduction reactions. So that just goes over some background terminology. So rule number one, always know what abbreviated words stand for. Rule number two, just know superficially what enzymes do what. Okay? I, I think that'll help you moving forward. So that's background information. Now let's jump into our first topic and that is nutrition. When you buy food and you flip it over and you see the nutrition label, you see things like how much fat is in there and how much carbs are in there and how much protein is in there, correct? And they all have their different structural chemical differences. They all have their different uses and purposes, but they share something in common. And that is they give you energy. They give you ATP. If you burn carbs and protein, you get four calories every gram. You burn fat, you get a whopping nine calories every gram. Questions I've seen about these are usually mathematical, how much, I guess, calories are in 200 grams of protein or 200 grams of fat, etc. So notice, carbs and protein are four calories a gram, fat is a whopping nine calories a gram, okay? We said they're all structurally different, how can they all then give ATP? Well, when you ingest them, your body will break it down into this, this building block, this common denominator, and from that common denominator, it can make anything, yeah, including ATP. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start with carbs. We're gonna find out just what happens when you break it down. We're gonna follow it. And using that as a backbone, using that as kind of like our building block, we're gonna add in protein, see how that fits. We're gonna add in fats, see how that fits, okay? So this does it for this video. Next video, we're gonna talk all about carbohydrates.